And we had a really exciting exchange of emails where, where I was giving him new information about bits of text I'd read and he was doing the reverse. And I, being completely ignorant of ancient Greek astronomy, couldn't interpret this. But Alex was the ideal person to actually interpret and understand what we were reading. The names of the months on the mechanism are very valuable for us because they identify possible places where the mechanism might have been manufactured, possibly where the mechanism was meant to be used, possibly both. We can't be sure. Now this is a great surprise for us. All expectations were that the mechanism would have come from some place in the eastern Mediterranean, perhaps the island of Rhodes. That has been the most popular candidate. What we found was that the calendar is characteristic of places that are always in the western part of Greece, up in the northwest of Greece, or the island of Sicily. One of the possible places that had the same calendar that the mechanism had on the Metonic dial was Syracuse. Syracuse was a great city of the Greek world. It was also the hometown of one of the greatest of ancient mathematicians and scientists, Archimedes. There is a quote from Cicero in the classical literature which describes a mechanism that was made by Archimedes that sounds very similar to the Antikythera mechanism. So it's very tempting for us to link the mechanism with Archimedes. But Archimedes was killed at the siege of Syracuse in 212 BC. We think the earliest this mechanism could be is 140 BC. So we don't think Archimedes made the mechanism. But there is a possibility, if it came from Syracuse, that it was made as part of a workshop tradition that goes back to the great old man. Another thing we discovered was that the machine is an eclipse prediction machine. It has a dial which follows this ancient eclipse prediction cycle called the Saros cycle. If you have an eclipse in one month and you look 223 months later, you will get a very similar eclipse, whether it's of the sun or the moon. And this repeat goes on for 12 or 15 centuries. It's a remarkable cycle. Let me just show you this one. This is sort of from inside, and I'm going round through and out yeah. to show the Saros dial. This is the Saros eclipse prediction yeah. dial here. You see, and you have to reset it, obviously. This little dial here, which is we call the exoligmos dial, goes around once every just over 54 years. It's a triple Saros, so every time you go around this dial, you go around one of these sectors. Uh -huh. The numbers in these sectors tell us how much time to add to the eclipse time in the glyph when we go around this dial for a second time for Eta and a third time for oh, the Eta diagram. It's a little hour adjustment. Yeah, yeah. So we now know what the function of this little dial is as well. Yeah. Lovely. It's beautiful, isn't it? Another small dial stars in the latest Nature paper. The Olympiad dial was a very exciting part of our work. The dial you can see in this slice, it's the circular ring with two cross diameters. But this slice is a bit too high up to show you very much writing on it. Now, Tony was sending me slices that were running down from here. We see details that don't show up in the first slice. You can see some lettering is showing up here. This is the alpha, like in modern A. Now I'm showing the lettering inside the pi slices that show the cycle of year numbers. So in every year of the cycle, there would be one or two of these international games held, and the mechanism is showing for the current year, which are the games to expect. A four-year cycle is a bit of a surprise on the mechanism because it doesn't really have an astronomical function. It has a cultural function. It was the timing for the games that the Greek cities organized in major cult centers at four-year or two-year intervals, like the Olympic Games, which are not events of any scientific significance, but they're events that were of enormous social significance in the Greek world. And now Don Unwin must put all this together and actually make his replica Antikythera work. But his most famous instrument, the 14th century Dondi clock, this is the dial of the sun, shows just what he can do. I'm astonished by this, you know, if you think 14th century, I just... 
You know, and it's, it's the full Ptolemaic system for the planets, isn't it? Yes, it, you know. yes. See, when I see this, I see the development of the Antikythera technology. You do, it's, don't you? It's all there at its birth in the Antikythera That's mechanism. Right, yeah. And then you see this extraordinary evolution into That's the right. Ptolemaic system. Yeah. What we have now is a mechanism which is, as Price said, a mechanical calculating machine. It calculates cycles of the solar system. And it does it in a beautiful and brilliant way. Price's model was a complicated model doing simple things. We have a complicated model doing complicated and extremely sophisticated things in a design which is pure genius. It is fully at the top level of what we know that ancient Greek science could do and ancient mechanical technology could do. I sit for days looking at these x-rays and I find these tiny little clues about how it works and what it did and I'm still astonished by it.